the next adjective we have is Durgama Daitya Loka Davagada. Now we had this stotra describes the multi, many different aspects of the multifaceted dimensions of Durga Devi. So this aspect is Durga Daitya Loka Davagada. So in this, we are again going back from the, uh, away from the Jnana aspect. And again, this is uh, concentrates on her fighter aspect. Okay. So we are going back and forth upon, upon in different aspects of Durga Devi's personality. Durga Daitya Loka Davanala. Anala means fire. The last word is Anala. Anala is fire. There are two different words, Anala and Anila. Anala means fire. Anila means wind. Like in Atharva Shisha also it says, Bhumi Rapo Analo Anilo Nabaha. Bhumi Rapo Anilo Analo Anilo Nabaha. So, we are talking about Anala, the fire. So Durga is the fire. Of what? For what? What is she fire for? Daitya Loka. Loka means world. Loka is world. Daitya are the demons. Daitya Loka, the world of demons. She is the fire that burns, demolishes, annihilates, destroys the worlds of demons. We have heard only a few names of demons like Chanda Munda, Madhuka Itabha, Mahishasura. These are the major stories that we read in the Devi Mahatmya. But she is the she has killed Daitya Loka, the world of demons. Durga Daitya Loka Davadana. She is the fire that destroys the entire worlds of demons. That is the kind of power this formidable uh, deity has. Durga Daitya Loka Davadana. In this here, the Durga doesn't say talk about Durga Devi, but Durga is Durga Daitya. Durga Daitya. Even those Daityas, even those Rakshasas or demons that are extremely difficult to fight with, they are the, they are the Daityas. Those are the kind of Daityas. So she kills the extremely formidable and difficult, uh, difficult to vanquish Daityas. She destroys them. And not only a few Daityas, but the whole worlds of Daityas. That is the power and the might of this formidable Devi. And that is the aspect that is uh, given in Durga Daitya Loka Davanala. So the whole, I want to draw your attention to one thing. This is just one word. It says so much. That's the beauty of Samasa in Sanskrit, compound. I always talk about synthesis and analysis. I just try to analyze before you the meaning of this synthesized word. And that synthesis and compounds, that's the beauty and specialty of Sanskrit. German language also has uh, samasas. Because I learned a little bit German at one time. Actually, I learned more, but that was a long time ago. And I learned German because of my love for Sanskrit. Anyway, that was I don't remember anything about it now, but I don't remember the samasas. I was amazed by the samasas, the compound that they have in the German language. Anyway, so I wanted to draw your attention to samasas. Uh, that is the beauty of the construction of Sanskrit language. That is the beauty why it is so compact and carries so much meaning in just one word. Durga, Daitya, Loka, Davanala. So we have lots and lots of negative tendencies. All these negative tendencies, they are the daityas. And these negative tendencies, they create a cocoon around themselves. And when that cocoon comes in, then it becomes very hard to destroy. They say there is strength in unity. And there is strength in unity on the negative side also. So when all the negative forces start ganging up together, then it becomes very difficult. So, this energy, Durga, is so powerful that she can blast out all of these and 
I would like to bring your attention to a small uh, fine detail. It is not just normal fire. It is huge, raging, monstrous forest fire. When you have you have fire in your uh, backyard, you have uh, in your as a bonfire or in your fireplace, or even you have fire as a small deeper. That's one form of fire. But what about that blazing forest fire that devours anything and everything which comes in the path? It doesn't care what is there. Just destroys, burns everything away. If it is a small little fire, then that small little fire cannot burn a building down. But if it becomes a huge raging forest fire, then miles and miles of forest with anything and everything in it just gets destroyed. And it moves so fast that even with latest technology, it becomes almost impossible to contain that. That is the strength which can be generated. And mind you, this strength is controlled strength. It is not an out of control strength. She knows when to come down. She knows when to tune it up. That is the attribute. And like Archana ji said, we spoke of the knowledge aspect first and then the action aspect. We have not moved away from it, but you look at the continuity. Only knowledge is of no use. That knowledge needs to be implemented. Action is needed. So knowledge and action, they need to go hand in hand. Only I know that, okay, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3, 100 plus 200 is equal to 300. But if I don't apply that knowledge, no point. Newton's first law of motion, I know it very well. But if I don't apply that, no vehicles will move. Nothing will move. It's just something which is there in the mind. I know that there are daityas and the daityas can be destroyed and all those concepts are great. You need to come out from intellectual concepts into action. Durga indicates that action. She is not just Jnana Shakti. She is also Kriya Shakti. She is also Ichha Shakti. She is the union of all of that. That is Durga and that is the form we were looking at. Durga Daitya. Loka Davanana. The one who can assume that huge, almost uncontrollable energy which can destroy anything in front of her. So, offering our pranam to her, we try to internalize the meaning of this. So that when we chant the mantras, then slowly that meaning, you know, unfolds within us. It should not come intellectually. That feeling should come up from the heart. You should feel, oh my God, that is Durga Daitya Loka Davanala. You don't need to use the intellect. It should happen spontaneously. That is the beauty and that is the necessity. And about Sanskrit language, it is Dev Bhasha. Jitna bole utna kam hai. Sanskrit me, ye sab janne ki koi jagat nahi hai. Aap keval un mantra ko ekdam sahi se bolte jaye, bolte jaye, bolte jaye ka, wo arth apne se, andar se, un milit hona shuru ho jata hai. It just starts unfurling and blossoming from within. You don't need to understand. In our Guru Ashram, Swamiji used to say, you know, the villagers around, they were, they used to say, nahi, hum padna likna nahi jante hai. Swamiji used to give them Ramayana. Ah, Ramayana padh lete hai. Padna likna nahi jante hai. 
रामायण पढ़ लेते नाउ दे से दे कांट रीड दे कांट राइट इफ दे आर एबल टू रीड रामायण वॉट इज है that knowledge that ability is there but there is also a block somewhere so when you use the intellect there is a block but when that goes away kyunki ramayan hai see the villagers are very simple innocent they don't realize that when you even if you have to read ramayan i need to use that skill of reading i need to understand that wahi to padhna likhna hota hai hum padhe likhe nahi hai swami ji ramayan ha hum padh lenge ramayan is it not contradictory yes it is contradictory but this is what sanskrit can bring about intellectually we might not understand anything but we can experience that the villagers you ask them to write read write anything those ladies would not be able to do that but ramayan it would come out why because there is bhakti there is a different energy which comes in and with sanskrit this also happens you might not understand you might not know but even if you chant it regularly over a period of time that knowledge starts blossoming within us because this knowledge is not outside this knowledge is inside in the same way as you have a cloud system outside there is an akashic system inside and the knowledge is in the akashic system how can we connect to that akashic system sanskrit is one of the simplest ways because that has those wires which connect wireless wires that wireless system which connect the akashic system with this limited system my mobile with the cloud services how do we connect with the sim card and the user password the same way sanskrit provides that so that is what we have to know understand the meaning but don't get caught up into the intellectual part of it let it come from deep within namo narayan yes hana namo narayan swami ji and thank you for the very nice uh, uh, chanting um you were talking about akashic uh, this thing there is a i read about it is called the akashic records is that the same thing you're talking about they actually have a library here about a person in america who had got access to that and it's somewhere in virginia and it, it's called the akashic physical, records i am not speaking of those physical re- records but no no not physical these yeah. are akash the, the the all of all of the spoken word and even mm-hmm. what we're thinking is all collectively up yes. there yes uh, yes and so this person i forget what his name is but i read about him and they have a library mm-hmm. was able to access it but yeah. we don't know how he accessed it so very interesting that you're bringing this up because i'm i'm very curious to know about how this works that is what is the mantra when you chant the mantra you create that you slowly start creating that channel between this individual system and that akashic system and the moment okay. suppose you have got this uh, network tower and you have your individual mobile until and unless the connection is not established between the two information is not downloaded on your mobile the moment that connection is established all that information comes in. that is a sample of the akashic records i mean that is huge vast humongous something which we cannot even begin to comprehend but we can get a speck of that a little tiny bit and that tiny bit in itself is overwhelming for us so you know it it uh, depending on how much our bandwidth is only that much data is sent across so that we can process it properly and then take more records and all what we are doing here is preparation for that all the spiritual practices are actually preparation for that when the preparation is complete then in one moment the connection is established and then everything is achieved 
So thank you, Swamiji. So they they're saying that the Akashic records are typically accessed through a prayer called the pathway prayer. The prayer uh, is a vibration. Records, Akashic records can be accessed by hundreds of ways. You know what uh, uh, Archana was mentioning about Nephi, Nephi, etc., etc., etc. Not limited to this, not limited to that. These Akashic records are a manifestation of that cosmic reality, which sometimes we call as God. So, yes. uh, Indian scriptures say there are hundreds and thousands of ways to reach God. Now, what is God? God is Supreme Consciousness. A manifestation of Supreme Consciousness is this Akashic records. So, there is not one way to reach out to those records. You can reach them in hundreds and thousands of ways. Almost every person can have his or her own way. There are wow. certain principles which have to be followed, which don't yeah. change. But we can customize the path for ourselves. Thank you, Swamiji. Thank you, Swamiji. Namanar. So, Swamiji. Uh, yes, Archana. You Swamiji, can I ask a question? Yes. Hello? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Ahead, the Saturday Havan uh, session, you were going to record. And I think I have recorded it, but uh, because of a couple of programs, I was not able to um, uh, post it. But I will, uh, hopefully today I should get some time and I will post it. Okay. Thank you, Ram. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Samit. Yes, Archana. I will tell you, you mentioned that the, the villagers could read Ramayana, but when they don't have the they don't know how to read and write, how can they identify the uh, the word? How can they identify is, the word? How can they read it? That is what I don't know it means. Understand. Okay, they can learn it by heart. They can learn by heart and say no, that's, no. that's possible. No, 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 it, no, is, no. it doesn't mean that. <laughs> it, it is not that. You see, yeah, they that, know. It, that not, somehow or the other, they are able to make it make out because, of course, it, reading is not so, you know, so not so difficult. But uh -huh. uh, intellectually, there's a block that, oh, we can't do it. Ramayan, Ramayan to ye Bhagwan ka chij hai. Ah, na Ramayan to hum pad sakte hai. So it is just the uh, ability of the mind that if I say A for apple, B for bat, oh no, 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 I can't understand that. But when it is Ramayan, something changes in their mind and they start comprehending. So I see. yes, they are able to read. They are able to understand. Yeah, okay. But yeah, so I think what they say is uh, they don't, I mean, they want to say that they don't know really too much about nee, nee. studies or something like that. Nee, no. Isn't that? The, the thing is that, uh, I mean, that was just an example I had given. Yeah, that's uh, but uh, in now going to the detail of that, you see, uh, the social system in India is uh, not only in the India, it is everywhere. India has got a bad name, that's all. Uh, there is exploitation of the have-nots by the haves. And uh, in that, the only way you can exploit is by telling them that you are stupid, idiot, fools, you don't know anything. So you listen to me. And that next step of that is that I, I'm, I'm so stupid. You know, I start believing it and I start believing it and I start believing it that... I, even when there is nobody around, I believe that I'm so stupid that I can't understand. And that becomes a very, very big block. And when that comes across generations, that is as good as a physical block. Hmm. And they cannot overcome it. And Swamiji used Ramayan to break that block. Ramayan kana hai ji. Mind to Bhagwan ka naam hai na, usme kya hai, usme padha, padhai likhai ki baat nahi hai. Trick hmm. kiye thai Swami Ji ne, un logon ko. So they, they, unki bhaavana, and no, nobody told them this is ka, this is ka, this is ga. Wo apne se gana shuru kiye, gana shuru kiye, gana shuru kiye, chhe mahine mein, do mahine mein, exact dates uh, yaad nahi, apne se kitab maang maang karke leke jate thai. Swami Ji, humko ghar mein ramayan padna hai kitab dijiye. 
और घर में बैठ करके पढ़ते थे क्यों क्योंकि वो सुन करके मालूम है जब हम बोल रहे हैं जो सो मेरा तिद्धि हो दैट एंड दिस सम हाउ और दर दे स्टार्टेड मेकिंग द को रिलेशन एंड दे स्टार्टेड रिकोगनाइजिंग एंड दे वेर एबल टू रीड बट दैट रिमेन लिमिटेड फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम ओनली टू रामायण लेटर ऑन एज द प्रोग्रेशन स्टार्टेड है धीरे धीरे वो हाँ अरे हम तो ये भी पढ़ सकते हैं अरे हम तो वो भी पढ़ सकते हैं धीरे धीरे एक्सपांशन हो गया इट वॉज द ब्लॉकेज ऑफ द माइंड विच हैड टू बी रिमूव एंड स्वामी जी यूज रामायण फॉर रिमूविंग दैट ब्लॉकेज ऑफ द माइंड केवल लिटरेसी बोलने से कुछ नहीं होता है जी आप ए बी सी डी कर देंगे देर आर सो मेनी पीपल दे से दे आर लिटरेट वही गांव की बात करते हैं वॉट कैन वॉट डज लिटरेट मीन इंस्टेड ऑफ पुटिंग योर थम इंप्रेशन दे विल जस्ट साइन but that is all they know here there is no difference which has taken place by this there is a change which is happening here by the mantras the brain which was frozen shut developed like, yeah ahilya was not necessarily uh, something which that she became a physical stone but her consciousness came down and got frozen and solidified that she could not go beyond and she got stuck over there and shri ram gave that nudge where that shell broke and the purity came out again so this is exactly what swami ji did mental blockage is there that i am hopeless i am bad i am useless i can't read i can't write not possible not possible not possible no 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 you don't read don't don't write you i am not asking you to do read writing bhagwan ka naam lena hai और भगवान के नाम से दैट ब्रेक थ्रू टू प्लेस सो दैट इज वॉट स्वामी जी डिड ओवर देर आई जस्ट यूज दैट एग्जाम्पल टू एक्सप्लेन अ पॉइंट थैंक यू स्वामी जी थैंक यू स्वामी थैंक यू नमो नारायण नमो नारायण नमो नारायण नमो नारायण थैंक यू स्वामी